Hi, my name is Elizabeth Yost Hammer, and I'm the director for the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Faculty Development. And I wanted to just share with you today some sample AI policies for the syllabi. We, you know, one thing you're going to need to think about, we're all going to need to think about um, as we are responding to AI and higher education is what are our policies going to be around this? We can't just ignore it and pretend like it doesn't exist. Um, so we're going to need to think about what are our policies? Where do we stand? Um, some of this needs to be at the institutional level. We need to talk about it as a university. Some of it needs to be at the departmental or programmatic level. Like what are different departments and programs stances on this? But also we'll think about it on our core at, at a course level. Um, someone's policy on AI might be different in a upper level seminar class than it is, let's say, in a, a thousand level survey class. Right? So we need to be thinking about this. Um, so I just want to share with you a few sample syllabi statements that are out there. Um, I really like this. This is from uh, Colorado State. Um, their teaching and learning center at Colorado State. And I really like these because it shows the extremes, right? So here's the prohibitive statement. This is from uh, someone's syllabi. Any work written, developed, created, or inspired by artificial intelligence is considered plagiarism and will not be tolerated. While the ever-changing and exciting new developments with AI will find their place in our work forces and personal lives, in the realm of education and learning, this kind of technology does not belong. This is because the use of AI robs us all of the opportunity to learn from our experiences and from each other, to play with our creative freedoms, to problem solve, and to contribute our ideas in authentic ways. In a nutshell, college is a place for learning, and this class is specifically a space for learning how to improve our writing. AI simply cannot do that learning for us. All right, this is the prohibitive statement. It will not be tolerated. Um, so this is relying on AI detection, right? And we have a, a video in the, our resources on AI detection, which is not perfect. Um, so one caveat to this prohibitive statement is, can you, can you prove it? Oh, and I hate to even go there, but can you prove it? If not, can you say, it's strictly prohibited, prohibited. Is that ethical to say? Is that fair to say? Something to think about if you're gonna go the prohibitive route. Um, one thing I do, one little aside I wanna add here. I like this statement though because it's talking to the student. It's not just you must not in this and students must not. Like, you know, it's got language where it's talking to the student, it's engaging the student, which I think is gonna be important. Well, we should use it in any policies on our syllabus, but especially important with these. Okay, there's also the use with permission statement. Okay, the use with permission statement. So here's another one from a uh, syllabus at Colorado State. Generally speaking, you are not authorized to use artificial intelligence engines, software, or artwork generating programs or similar to produce work for this class, except on assignments that I have identified um, and for which you will have received significant guidance on appropriate use of such technologies. I will provide more information about the specific assignments when the time is appropriate in the course. You may not, however, construe this limited use as permission to use these technologies in any other facet of this course. Okay, so this is a professor who's going to embrace it in some learning and not in others and is making it very clear for the students, it's not up to you to decide when that uh, where that line is I will tell you explicitly where that line is and again I would say as we are making these policies and we're moving forward in this new world um, that it's going to be really important for us to be clear and explicit with a student while still talking to them right while still talking to them um, and it but being clear and explicit for them right how and when to use it so this is the kind of use with permission. And then we have the ab abdication statement, okay, from another syllabus. And this statement is like, from this point forward, I will assume that all written work has been co-authored or entirely written by ChatGPT. 
I will grade such writing as I normally would, and your grade will be a reflection of your ability to harness these new technologies as you prepare for your future in a workforce that will increasingly require your proficiency with AI-assisted work. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, there's some truth in this. We're going to have to teach students to be proficient in this um, work, especially if one's mission is to create leaders in, in you know, for a just and humane world, they're going to have to be able to harness um, these new technologies. Um, ah, but do we want to grade work that's not their own? It would teach them these skills. I don't know the answer to this. The answer is going to be individual to all of us, right? My guess is that many of us will be somewhere between the prohibitive and the abdication and will find that sweet spot. And my guess is it's also going to change as these technologies change and and uh, you know our, our our and our objectives change. Uh, my my big advice on this is to really look at your course objectives. Okay, look at your course objectives. What do students in your field really need to know moving forward? So I know it's weird to talk about course objectives in policy when well, we're talking about syllabi policies, but um, my advice is to really look at your course objectives first. Are you really focusing on what students are gonna need to know in this new world, okay, in your discipline? And then look at your assignments from there. Are your assignments authentically achieving this? Okay, are your assignments achieving this? And then, based on your assignments, really look at your statements, your policy statements are there. Don't start with the, the statements. Do this backwards design and then get to what you're gonna put in your syllabi about this so that it, it's real, right? And it matches what you really expect from students. Because once you draw a line in the sand, prohibit, then it's up to you to, for fairness, right, for fairness and ethics to explore, was this written by AI? And if we can't do that well, is that really what we want to be spending our time doing? But if you just make it a free-for-all, you can use it. You can use it any way you want to. Then why, what are we really grading? Are we grading writing? Are we grading the use of this technology? And is there a, are there better assignments than to... To, to teach them how to harness these tools. Okay, see what I mean? Objectives, then really look at those assignments that will show you that these students have met these objectives and then really explore your policies. It's gonna take some, take some real reflection in one on our parts. Um, there's one other um, uh, syllabus statement I wanna share. I really liked this one, and this one was from uh, Oregon State's uh, uh, Center for Teaching and Learning. And they just did different samples there, but I really liked the, uh, the tone and language of this from, this from this syllabus. So they had it, they have their syllabus set up in a series of questions, and one of the questions was, so, can I use ChatGPT or other AI tools to help write this paper? Because um, they had the paper assignment in the syllabus. And this professor said, here's what you can do and here's what you can't do. Okay, so things you can do. Ask ChatGPT questions. And it goes on with this. Um, I personally do this and here's how I do this. And you can uh, get it to give you some articles and use those articles to find other articles and consider same questions and, you know, review, compare, and investigate. Repeat this cycle. But keep in mind you're getting it from AI and it's crowdsourced information and not a reliable product of research and assessment. So again, this professor is giving students um, the opportunity to use AI at this beginning stage, but also saying you're gonna have to think critically about it. And then this would be especially nice if you're building in critique and criticism of it into the class so that they can learn it, right? We're gonna have to teach this. And then it says things you can't do. Don't use it to draft your paper. Don't use it to give you citations. Okay, and then it explains why. It explains why you can't do this. Um, again, how are we going to detect if they did these things? 
you can't, uh, cannot do, that's going to be questions we have to consider and really think about moving forward. Okay, and we will tackle those. Um, but again, I really liked this example because, again, it's talking directly to the student and it's saying here are ways you can use it because it's going to be real. It's going to be real and we're going to be using it. Okay, but here's what you can't do to meet this learning objective of writing a paper. So things to think about. Again, like I said, it's going to take some deep reflection. I'm going to take the challenge and really dig deep and look at this and I hope you do too.